the study of evil, as we continue, we're in misery, pain, and suffering. I probably said this on every video. This is the 31st, actually, yeah, 31st video we're doing. You need all 30 and this 31. This is not a study that, all right, I like number five, I like number seven, I like eight. You got to get it all. And when we're doing the word study throughout the King James Bible, we're not doing all the words. Every single time evil shows up, as you turn to 1 Samuel 20, verse 9. There are some words of evil in the Bible we're not doing. I didn't want this to be a comprehensive of every, like we did the word fool. But we got 54 pages and we're at 27 right now. And under the heading, like I said, we're under pain, suffering, and misery. We're going to do number 11 through 15. And this assignment here alone has twenty nine. And there's probably others. So first Samuel twenty verse nine. And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee. For if I knew certainly that evil was determined upon determined by my father unto thee, David, then would I have not then would not I tell it thee? Jonathan saying to David, after David's accused Jonathan's father, King Saul, he wants me dead. So, the evil here is wanting someone dead. And we know when you study the Bible, unless you're you're a newborn babe in Christ or, or just begin to grow, King Saul never kills David. David dies of old age. And yet the Bible still puts the evil charge if you want somebody dead, even if you don't do it. It's an evil credited to you and me. As Jesus said, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her in your heart has already committed adultery with her. You don't need to sleep with her. You don't need to get naked with her. You don't need a bed, backseat of her. You just got to think about it. Have you ever thought about, oh, I wish he'd die. I wish, oh man, but give me the chance, I'd kill him. That's evil. That's evil. First Samuel 20, verse 13. The Lord do so, and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do thee evil, then I will show it thee, and send thee away, that thou mayest go in peace. And the Lord be with thee, as he's been with my father. So again, here's Jonathan and David talking. And we know there is a plot by King Saul to kill David. And Jonathan is Saul's son. David is the son-in-law of the king. And we saw in, in 20 verse 9, uh, the evil is deaf to another person. And we see in verse 13, deaf to a to another is wanted. Same thing, another person. There is that desire. Again, Saul never accomplishes that desire. And yet he will go down at the great white throne judgment as a murderer of David, though he never killed him. Joab I think it's a Mesa, one of the men that Joab killed. And when you read the account, Joab's brother was also accused. Joab's brother didn't do it, but he was thinking about it. 
Jezebel had Naboth murdered for the vineyard. Ahab was was in the in the castle in in the royal facility. And Jezebel sent forth letters in her in her husband's name, signed his, his name, and sent forth and had Naboth killed. And Elijah approaches Ahab and says, "Hey, have you killed?" And the word of the law is called a Betty. You could be sitting in a car outside of a convenience store, and your friend go in and steal and kill and come back out to the car and you drive away and not know nothing, you are still a party to that crime. That's what King Saul is. He's a party to the crime of the evil of I want David dead. And right now, if you ever have not ever confessed the sins of wanting somebody dead, wishing someone to be dead, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. You need to confess that sin now before the Lord comes or before the Lord brings you home, Christian. And we not ought not to think about killing, murdering, even just thinking about it. It's a sin. It's an evil. Okay. First Samuel twenty four eleven. First Samuel twenty four eleven. Moreover, my father, it's David talking to King Saul. David is the son in law to the king. See? Yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. Solomon's you see what happened is David's going in the cave to hide out. King Saul's came in the cave, whether to take a nap or go potty. <laughs> that's question. And while, while the men are there, King Saul and David and his men, his men go to David and say, let's kill him. Come on, come on, let me at him. Let me kill him. David's like, no, he's in Lord's anointed. And what David does is he grabs hold of King Saul's skirt, a man wearing a skirt, and he rips off, cuts off a piece of that skirt. And David ventures out, and he's repenting that he's even done such a vile thing of cutting the man's skirt. The man's skirt. The man's skirt. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe, and killed thee not. Know thou, and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand. For I have not sinned against thee. Yet thou huntest my soul to take. You want me dead. And David says... I had the opportunity. I could have done whatever I wanted to you, King Saul. I could have beat you up. I could have bound you. I could have killed you. I, I could have... You name it. And David would have full support of the soldiers that were with him because they wanted Saul dead. And so the evil here is doing harm, pain, or death to someone else. All David did was cut the man's skirt off. And there was no bodily harm or death done to King Saul. He says, neither evil transgressions in my hand. So we see an evil of somebody wanting death, and we see an evil of someone uh, that could have been harm, could have been pain, or even death. First Samuel twenty-five seventeen.
Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do. For evil is determined against our master, against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Now David on the run, and we come to Nabal, a wicked, vile man. And Nabal has sheep and sheep herders. And they're out in the fields feed, feeding the sheep. And the shepherds are doing their shepherding. And David and his army, his men are there. And David used to be a shepherd. And David's probably befriending the shepherds and talking with the shepherds. And his soldiers are talking with Nabal's men and all that. And while David is in conference and meeting of Nabal's shepherds and employees and servants, David's men are protecting Nabal's men and his sheep. Nabal has, for what period of time it is, we're not told, he has a security force protecting his property and his employees and his servants and maybe even family. And David goes and inquires, sends some servants, says, go tell your neighbor, hey, listen, we need some bread, some water, we need food, we need some rations. And they go off to Nabal, Nabal, well, who is David? A man that runs away as a servant runs away. I am not going to give no... Though Nabal never agreed to David's services, David did provide services to the flocks and to the servants and maybe family of Nabal. There was a service. And under Jewish law, it would have been perfectly improper, even if David was an enemy, if, if your neighbor hungers, give him food. But Nabal does not give David nothing but the cold shoulder. And, Dave, and the servants come back to David. David's like, all right, everyone put your swords on. Gird up your, your slingshot. And let's, we're going to go wipe out everything of Nabal. We're going to wipe out, in a crude kind of sense, we're going to wipe out every male of Nabal. And that's where the expression pisses against the wall. That's a Bible word. That's not cussing. Why, are, why is it the Bible words are cussing? And there is one gender of sex that's able to perform that duty against the wall. And David says, every male of Nabal. And it, the servants come to Nabal's wife, Abigail. And they're explaining to us, listen, David's men were good to us. We had fellowship. We had friendship. I mean, we had a good time. And they protected us. And all David did was say, listen, we need some food. And your husband, the evil miser, no. And so there's evil determined upon the house. David has in the in the thought of his mind, he's going to completely wipe out this man's family, this man's servants, this man's everything. Now, whether David would have been in the right or David been in the wrong again, Nabal did not have a contract. He did not hire David. But David did provide a service. And I think Abigail is sent by God, by the love of God for David, that she appeased the whole situation. But the evil that David had in his heart, was worse than what King Saul wanted. King Saul wanted only David. I want dead. David, everything that is male of Nabal, kill him. That's an evil. I'm not saying David's wrong, and I'm not saying David's right, but that's the evil. 2 Samuel 13, 16. Second Samuel thirteen sixteen. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little confession here. 
And I have to confess it. It's a sin. There are times when I can't sleep. Yeah, I'm not going to. It's under the blood. You're right. Oh, what, what, what? It's under the blood. And when I do do that sin, I put it under the blood. Let God handle it. 2 Samuel 13, 16. Wow, it must have been good. Get back to this, buddy. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other, the other that thou didst to me, because he would not hearken unto her. Now this is Amon. Amon is da David's son. One of David's sons. Tamar is the daughter of Absalom. Now the other that this verse speaks about is Amon has, or Amon, has raped his sister. His brother's daughter. He's raped his niece. And he's forced her to have sex with him. And the great love that he had for her beforehand, after he rapes her, he gets an extreme hatred worse than the love. And he throws her out of his chambers. And he orders his men to come and say, get that woman out of here and lock the door. So not only is the rape evil, the other, but this evil is, rape is evil. It's having no feelings, and we're going to talk about, no feelings for the victim afterwards. Now, Amon had the liberty of statue in New York Harbor. He had the liberty to rape his niece. But he didn't want to take the responsibility afterwards. See, everybody wants liberty. But they don't want the responsibility. What is abortion? It's baby murder. No, it's, Well, yes, it is. Abortion is, I want the liberty to unbutton my pants, unzip my pants, and have free, unconditional sex. That's liberty. Responsibility is that free love produces a baby. But I don't want the responsibilities of a baby and the child and all that. Then I'll go remove. The responsibility of the liberty that I have. That's what it is. It's murder. So the evil here. Now, as far as I know, I, I've been many years. Uh, I, I can't remember. To at least the mid two thousand. I think I went into jail ministry a little bit after the OJ system trial. I think right around there. Whenever that happened. And pretty much when I was in the jail ministry, I tell them, I don't want to, I'm not going to tell you my sins. Don't you tell me what you, don't tell me what you're in here for. Tell God, tell Jesus Christ. We're done to what? And there were some men that they told me what their crimes were. Because they wanted me to pray for them. And I do. And there were some. I heard the crimes of others through their mouth. What I'm trying to say is. I don't think. As the prison ministries I've had. And I, I may, may have. I don't, I don't think I've ever dealt outright with a rapist. And yet I have dealt with one rapist. And he's in jail today. But he wasn't part of my ministry. And he was part of my ministry. 
And he has repented and gotten right. And has asked forgiveness of everybody that got involved. As much as the law will allow him to do. And I'm going to be under the assumption that there are some rapists out there. They don't care because they multiple rape. It's not just one. It's many. And sometimes they'll get out of jail and they'll go back and rape. And that they'll get tattoos. I forget what the emblem was. I used to know all that. You know, the teardrops and the roses and all that. I used to know what those were. And they'll get a tattoo and for every one they got is every rape victim. Every one they killed. And the evil is not only... I'm not just going to say a woman. I, I believe men can be raped too. I mean, equality of the sexes here. I mean, a man could be raped being forced by his woman boss to, to keep his job. The evil of rape is not only the rape of itself, and it's a serious crime. And it's foretold in the law. You know, the law said that if a man raped a woman, that if the father of the woman did not want to settle on the money, the dowry, that man was to take that woman to be his wife and he couldn't let her, he couldn't divorce her at all. That woman was not betrothed. She was a single woman and he, that, you now have a wife. Or you paid the father. And it is evil of raping. And it's also the evil of raping to have no feelings, no regard for your victims. And I've dealt with a couple women in my lifetime. Who were raped. Uh, even before I was saved I believe. And they still say. One of them said that there were times. When, when they were in the shower. They wished they could wash off. All the feelings that happened to them. From the time that they were raped. They can't get clean enough. And I would assume that the man that raped them, uh, who cares? Go on with my life. That is evil. That is just evil. And the Bible says it's evil. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I think that's it. Let's see. Death to another person, death wanted, doing harm, wiping out. One, two, three, four, five. See you, Lord, Lord willing, next week.